or you probably see a theme on my channel here. I read a lot of the really, really popular books this year. This is like as spicy as you can probably get. I'm not too sure because I have more books to talk about. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. You really want to be on camera, huh? Huh. Oh yeah. You read all these books about all these wars and stuff, but you never really think about I, I have a guest who's trying to eat my planner, no! Well, hello friends. Another year has ended and I quite literally don't remember what I read. So I thought it would be fun because I don't do monthly wrap-ups anymore. I wanted to review all the books that I read in 2023. And at the end of the video, I will pick my top five. Because right now, I, did I read any five-star books? I can think of one, but not that many. Last year's reading was a little shaky, but uh, definitely, I definitely feel like there was a few that I really enjoyed. So let's go down memory lane and see what books I read and which ones I recommend. In January, I managed to read about three books. I finally finished the Daughter of Smoke and Bone trilogy, and the third book is Dreams of Gods and Monsters. I love, love, love this trilogy. If you like romance and fantasy, romanticy, fantasy romance. This one, the plot definitely comes before the romance. Well, I don't know about that. <laughs> Depends on which book, because the romance becomes a very, very important plot point. But basically, this is a series following an angel and a demon who fall in love and kind of destroy the world together by accident, on purpose. Oopsie. I would highly recommend checking out this trilogy if you haven't already. It's a very fun, quick read. It was so enjoyable. I was really sad to see this series end. I'm definitely going to reread it eventually because I just adored this. I guess five star? Could that be a top? Okay, I'm gonna put it in the pile of top book contenders because I, I don't know if I read a lot of top books this year. I don't know. I don't know what I read. Next, we have On Rotation. So this book was very interesting because I just kind of really bought it for the cover because I did want to read more black fiction. It's about a woman who's, I believe, 25 and she's finishing her doctorate and it, it, things get messy because she has this kind of crush on a guy who has a girl and things get complicated but what I really enjoyed about this book was the references to friendship and how important they are as you get older and how it gets so hard to balance work and friends and love and romance and just being an adult is is quite difficult and this book made it both humorous and relatable. I will say this one I did knock down a little bit of a point for it because I think it's giving more 3.5 star vibes. The author themselves referenced a lot of Avatar The Last Airbender and a lot of just things that I personally would relate to but I don't think out of context a lot of people would. So I don't know how much I would recommend this to people. So I, I would definitely recommend this. Black women need to read more books about nerdy black women, you know? We love to see it. I, I had so much fun. This kind of started a romance kick because then I read On the Hustle. Now this book is steamy. I would say this has, I believe, some intimate steamy scenes, but not like, not like a lot, a lot. This one has a lot, a lot. This is like as spicy as you can probably get. <laughs> this is a full on romance. I really enjoyed this one on The Hustle. It's about a black woman who was working at this job and she finally decides to quit and pursue her dream of interior design, bookish themes, and she ends up leaving the state quitting her job that she had that she hated with the boss she hated, leaving the state to start this new career. And it's always been a side hustle and she's always been hustling for life. And this boss that, you know, she didn't really like actually has a massive crush on her and follows her out of state and maybe tries to woo her, which I know, I know, I know when I explain this book to a lot of people, they're like, that sounds hella creepy. But the book does it a really good job of explaining that he just cares for her and wants to like support and help her and not be crazy and awkward but also it's like can i tell you how i feel too pretty please maybe it's done really really well but what makes this book so good is how it talks about black women being tired of working so damn hard which i love we need more books like this you know what i mean i i truly truly appreciated the narrative of just how bad hustle culture can be and how hard you can work for everyone else in your life so it made me feel a lot of feelings you know like being a boss lady i also want romance and like my man to take care of me at the same time and i love i love and appreciate was it a favorite book I don't think so. February, I actually only managed to read one book, which was Such a Fun Age, which I just realized the author came out with another book and I will be reading it soon. I'm very much looking forward to it. I think 
this is again a five star read in essence not in that i really enjoyed reading it and i would reread it a lot but i really like the theme of this character who has all her friends who are all in high paying jobs they look really put together and all this stuff and she is a nanny and she's like i don't really have too many passions i i, I don't want to work 24 7 that's not my whole life i just want a job that i enjoy and i love that message because it kind of goes back to like the hustling and the life being hard it's just you know the message of the story was really 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 good and the writing very fun very good adult fic i would highly recommend especially like how it talks about race again black character you probably see a theme on my channel here and it does have a little bit of a romance focus too so we were staying in the romance vein yeah in march i surprisingly only read the new robin comic from teen titans i don't know how 30 days went by and i only read one small comic but that's that's what happened oh you know what i'm literally looking at my calendar right now this is probably why i didn't read that much if you want you could freeze frame but your girl had self tapes on self tapes i had two shoots i had a fitting Woo! i was i was getting booked and busy in march so let's hope for um that energy to continue shall we in 2024 let's get booked and busy ooh, ooh, ooh. in april of 2023 i actually managed to read quite a bit of books but mostly it was mangas i have prince feyra feyra i'm probably saying their name wrong i always say it wrong someone always corrects me i literally my brain's like how do i say this but i read volumes five through eight of this amazing manga series which it started off as a love triangle and immediately shifted the plot to this girl who's quiet and shy now has to pretend to be the prince of a country that is trying to not be destroyed through war <laughs> it gets so obscenely crazy and political and i love it and there's a subtle subtle romance plot happening underneath love it then i also started a different manga series called those not so sweet boys i read volumes one through four during this time of the year i read a lot of manga because i was just looking for quick fun reads those not so sweet boys was cute and fun but honestly don't remember a single plot line besides maybe like a bad guy being misunderstood and tr like people tried to kick him out of school and a really nice nerdy girl like listened to him and helped him and now he's finishing school i think that's like the main plot <laughs> and i did manage to read two books and dnf one book we'll talk about that in a second the first one was a poetry collection which i think i gave to my mom mom do you have quotas on while filming this has happened hello hi cutie baby <laughs> hi baby hi baby oh oh you really want to be on camera huh huh oh yeah i i have a guest who's trying to eat my planner no okay okay so you might hear baby walking around if you didn't see my last video my roommate did get a dog he's super cute but he's a little needy so he might come in and out and ask for some attention and that's totally fine i will give it to him as i was saying corazon is a poetry collection i believe my mom has it right now i'd like it back maybe please thank you it was really good it was very fierce i wish i could read you some of the poems because i remember there's some that talks about like the girl like ripping off a man's you know private parts and things it, it gets a little violent but it's all about self-love and it's about a protagonist who has to learn to love themselves because they are not the traditional beauty standard and have romantic relationships that still are fulfilling and meaning very good poetry collection highly recommend the next book actually might be a contender for the favorite book of the year and that is the neighbor favor by christina Forrest. this is such a cute romance between two bookish kind of nerd people there's a guy who is an author and a published author and a girl who wants to get into publishing but right now she's kind of stuck in a genre she doesn't like and she wants to transfer to a you know different sector of publishing but really struggling and she doesn't have a lot of dating things going on in her life or anything besides work going on and she ends up uh emailing this author that she really likes who published this kind of underrated book and they start emailing back and forth about life and writing and maybe catch feelings and then maybe disappear and ghost each other and it's a fun story i highly recommend it even though it kind of sounds like a cliche but it does it in such a beautiful heartwarming way i really like it and i know the partner plot which is the sequel to this book will be coming out very soon so i'm very excited. Christina Forrest is one of my favorite authors. So this is going in the pile of favorite books of 2023. 
Pretty sure it's gonna make the top five. Pretty confident. And then I also DNF'd Honey Girl during this month, which is very sad because I thought this would literally be a new favorite book and it wasn't. It wasn't my vibe. The next books that I read in May, I don't feel like getting because they are heavy and big, is the Ember and the Ashes series. I will just pop pictures up here. Woo! Oh my god, what a great series. I'm so proud of myself for finishing it finally. It definitely was heart-wrenching, but it was so, so good. If you're looking to get into fantasy, I'd say that is a really good start. The magic system's very unique and different and I also feel like Saba Tahir's writing is so perfect for people who need a, like a faster pace like the plot's just going at the end of each chapter you're like what's happening next what's happening next what's happening next so it's definitely really good if you need a gripping book and like say 2024 you want to read more and you like fantasy world you liked Game of Thrones as a show but you don't really want to read the books because that's uh, a really intense book series to get into. A different intense book series, but intense for different reasons, is An Ember in the Ashes. Basically, we're following two main characters, a guy who works for the oppressors of this country, and then a girl who is the oppressed. And are they allies? Are they lovers? Are they enemies? Read the book series and find out. Pew, pew, pew. And then I also finished those Not So Sweet Boys volumes like five through seven. Yep, that's what my planner says. Again, cute. Kind of bummed out that it, it was such a short series. It could have fleshed out way more of this like dark characters, like nobody loves or trusts me energy, yeah, but they didn't and that's okay. But it was cute. There is such a clear theme from last year. The Romantic Agenda by Clara Khan, which such a fun, good, Book. I read this during Pride Month and we have a sexual representation in here which I greatly appreciate in the Ace Fam. Woo! Basically this is a story about a girl who has an unrequited crush on this guy and she ends up getting invited to a uh, like kind of third wheel on his dates to a, a fun cabin with his current girlfriend who he thinks he wants to marry and she's just like <laughs> Uh, okay, and then we get a fourth wheel a guy who's best friends with the girl You know we got a love square kind of happening, but not really because the guys hate each other <laughs> Which is fun to read about and a romance ensues. It was It was really good. It was really good. I love it. <laughs> Next book I read was actor age Eve Brown Which is a series that a lot of people adore and I've just come to realize that it's just not my cup of tea. I think it's so important to see yourself in characters and books. So I love that. I love that Tally Hibbert is adding more representation and having these characters be seen, see women love their body and be confident and cool. So actor age, Eve Brown was definitely a good book. I, I just personally, I don't like that the Eve sisters are come they come from privilege they have money they they have wealth and i know i've been seeing so many people reviews saying that they love seeing black women have money and like not you know be struggling and hustling and they're just you know money isn't a concern which is so amazing to see yeah but i as someone who has a physical disability and a reading disability when i see other characters have disabilities and they don't have the same issues that i have with health insurance and like fear of like not having medication and it just seems like a very very um different experience from me and i know that's why i didn't really enjoy get a life chloe brown i couldn't kind of ignore that facet to enjoy the story eve brown i i kind of could get into and i liked all the baking and stuff i just still like the whole the the, the whole privilege underlined of this story makes me a little oh so it was like a three star. It's not a new favorite. I'm so sorry. I wish I loved them, but I don't. <laughs> oh, this next book is a big one. So big. It is A Day of Fall at Night by Samantha Shannon. This took all of July to read. Boy, it was a big one. I can link the video up above if you're interested in seeing kind of my reaction to reading this. But wow. Wow, what a book. Samantha Shannon really, um, she just does it. She, she has an idea and she does it. This is definitely more of a 3.5, maybe a 4 star. I did enjoy reading it. I just think it's like one of those books you really have to pour yourself into to really get all the characters and get the world and understand the stakes and 
care about them. It takes like half of the book to start caring about all of these different characters because there's just a huge ensemble cast. But I do enjoy the world and I did enjoy a few of the characters in here. There's one particular character I do not care for and that does make it really hard to enjoy a book when like a third of it is about her. <laughs> so I kind of wish that we could just focus on some of these characters instead of like having this whole huge cast where all their lives kind of intertwine because there's one really interesting sapphic romance that was in here that I really liked and I kind of wish the whole book focused on them this girl on this continent trying to save her people it's very 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 interesting again one plot was like so superior in my opinion to others but if you like fantasy this is definitely a great fantasy to kind of fall into and just get to piece the world together this is the prequel to priority of the orange tree which I have already read so it doesn't matter which order you read them in to be honest I honestly would read probably the prequel first if you, if you wanted to know my opinion I gotta rearrange my shelf real fast to go retrieve these books from August okay <laughs> this is too funny the theme of romance is continuing but it, it took a very hard shift from like ooh fun beach romance to a touch of darkness by Scarlet St. Clair in August I read A Touch of Darkness, A Touch of Ruin, and A Game of Fate. <laughs> Can you tell that I kind of just fell in love with this world? It's so cool. It's a retelling of Persephone and Hades, and the series starts off following Persephone's perspective, A Touch of Darkness, and then we go into Hades' perspective, which is super interesting. I love this take on Persephone because she is kind of naive, and but wanting to like help the world become a better place she wants to be a journalist she's going to college and her mom is still really much uh dampening her uh her capabilities of being an independent woman sadly and she ends up getting kind of stuck with hades in this little bet it forces her to come out of her shell and see the world for what it is and have more confidence in herself it has a lot to do with like self-love self-confidence a lot of dark themes though but I truly got so obsessed with this, like so obsessed with it. I read this in like two days. I have not read a book like that in so, so long. This, I guess this might be a contender for a top read because I uh, literally bought the rest of the series <laughs> and I'm going to do a reread this year because the last book comes out in Persephone's perspective and I'm sure there's going to be a full on war. Wait. Oh, okay. In September, I read a lot. I am so surprised. And I read a lot of good books. Oh, I'm so excited to talk about them. Okay, let's talk, let's talk. I was just like, oh my god, how did I read so much? Wow, how can I replicate this so I can read just as much? Like, I, like, wow. I quit my job. <laughs> That's why I was able to read so much because I was unemployed in September. <laughs> Which was a good call because now I have a job that I do not dread going to. I really, last year I really tried to make a certain couple jobs work but every time I stepped into the building like I would get so just dreadful for the day like I knew I was gonna have a bad day and I would say so many affirmations of I'm gonna love it people love me I love this job I love getting to meet new people like I was trying to make everything so positive but it just at the end of the day I was so so depleted and now I have a job where luckily that doesn't happen anymore that's a side note that's that's why I was able to read as much as I did to start off the month I read a touch of malice in a game of retribution these good love them love them this is like a solid four star series for me I, I really enjoy my time okay and then I think I was filming a like popular TikTok vlog, which I'll link above if you want to see. I read a lot of the really, really popular books this year and I shared my opinions on them. And I will tell you which ones I recommend and which ones I don't. Let's let's get into it. First, Alone With You in the Ether by Olivia Olivia Blake. So good. It's written so beautifully and profoundly. It definitely feels a little maybe fluffy when it comes to the writing style in the sense that word choice these are like very two very smart prolific characters talking to each other we have an artist struggling with their life basically trying to find purpose um having some ailments that they dive into in this book and then a uh what's it called he's not a scientist very sciencey stuff and they talk a lot about science which i love how they kind of just talk about science in this book but basically these two people meet at this kind of art institute and they decide to have six conversations with each other it's very interesting you see them kind of fall in love and explore each other's 
uh, like thought processes of the world and what they're experiencing. That's what I really enjoyed about this book in particular. We really got into the minds of these characters and I really cared about them and was hoping the best for them. I'd only recommend it if you like books like How to Lose a Time War and Open Water because those books are very uh, like profound very literature i use big words and very descriptive and i would say alone with you in the ether is definitely like that very existential let's break down big brain activities <laughs> i probably i hope i explained that good i probably didn't no worries the next book was assistant to the villain which i thoroughly enjoyed i knew going into this that this would be just a wacky silly time because on the back it literally said evie don't find evil so attractive <laughs> so i feel like i picked this up going like oh this is gonna be like a cw show and that's exactly what i got and i got exactly what i wanted but basically it's like an office romance but with like a mention of dead bodies and stealing things and stuff so it's very very cute it's a girl who can't hold a job and she ends up becoming an assistant to a village villain it's a fun quirky time i highly recommend it. it was a four star for me oh wait i don't know if these books should be on my top books for this year because i definitely really enjoyed this and I really enjoyed this. Okay, I'm gonna put these in my maybe pile of maybe top books. I'm not too sure because I have more books to talk about. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. So next, let's talk about Fourth Wing, which was a three star for me. I enjoyed it. I did recently come out with a vlog talking about Iron Flame. I'll link that above. I enjoyed Iron Flame more than Fourth Wing, surprisingly. But I think this is a great introduction to a very long fantasy series that I'm excited for. I feel like uh, after reading Iron Flame, I'm like the only one that's hyped for the world to continue growing and being destroyed and rebuilt and whatnot. The romance plot for me is not what I am here for. It's, it's I guess, nice. I know, for the most part, I don't really care about the romance. I just care about the world structure. It's so cool. And I wanna see Violet, the main character in this, really develop more. This is a story following Violet. She does have some sort of disability and she was, going to study to be I forget what it is but like the people in the library who like research for a living but then her mom forces her to join <laughs> the kind of warring soldier group and now she has to survive in this academy that literally tries to kill you every step of the way immediately there's a lot of stakes and a, a lot of things going down and it's a really fun fantasy romance to jump into i will not be putting that on the favorite books of this year just saying <laughs> don't hate me this next book oh is so gonna be a top book for this year divine rivals by rebecca ross ah, oh my god oh my god okay so 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 good i don't know how to explain this because there's so many little facets that happen within this story and i also love that it was concise and this is a duology i have the second book i'm so excited for it this is starts off as like enemies to lovers office romance where these two people are competing for a position in the office and they randomly well i don't know she ends up writing letters through a magical door <laughs> and there's also a war going on and it's getting really serious i honestly i like it literally can't explain I, I can't put to words. There's just so much going on. <laughs> so well written. So fun to read. The world is still just so vivacious and the stakes are so high and you care so deeply. It really makes you think about warring times. Um, that makes me, it makes me actually really sad to think about because I think when war is normally depicted in books, it's very flashy and cool fight scenes and someone might die. And you know, it's not, it has no gravity. This book has so much gravity. A uh, part of this book we see um, a village that is really trying to survive during this war and they have such strict rules and sometimes people give up all their beds and mattresses and food to the hospital because there's so many soldiers in need of care and literally all you do for most days is care for the injured and try and stay alive and be as helpful as you can. And I thought that was just such an endearing message and, and so much gratitude for life and the, the privilege I have. And it's just crazy to me because so many books, like I read Fourth Wing, I, you read all these books about all these wars and stuff, but you never really think about like there's a romance happening during a war and how lucky we are to have each other, to like each other. Um, to have this moment together because we don't know if we're going to pass and it was just so utterly touching 
favorite book for sure for sure Okay, the next book was a reread just for fun. It was Enchantment of Ravens by Margaret Rogerson. This book is honestly the best fall book ever. It is about an artist living in the fae world and she makes a living painting different fae. One day, a person comes to be painted and she paints emotion in their eyes. That's a big no-no for Faye, because obviously they live forever, they don't have emotions, if you know Faye customs and worlds. This is actually the first book that I read about Faye, because I know Holly Black has a lot of different series about Faye and things like that. So I was learning about the structure of Faye and how they're non-emotional and live for so long and all this stuff. You follow this girl, this artist, just trying to survive, and then... So she paints emotion into some portrait and because of that she is now getting punished and dragged into the fey world to suffer the consequences. Oh, but it's such a cute little adventure story romance and again, it's so short but it packs such a great punch. I really think fantasy sometimes just over over talk sometimes. In the month of October, I only managed to read one book and that was Ninth House. But then following month, I did finish Hellbent and I made a little vlog about this. Again, I will link all the vlogs, I guess, below because I feel like a lot of my reading is very much connected to the content I make. But I love this series. Dark, academic, badassery. Like Hellbent took it to such a new level of just badass energy trying to save an individual and fight demons and fight their way through hell to try and do the honorable thing and save somebody's life crazy so definitely check out ninth house there's a lot of trigger warnings because it is adult and it has a lot of dark um subject matters i can't wait till the next one comes out it's i just in November, I also read, besides Hellbent, I got to read Vespatine by Margaret Rogerson. A little disappointed by this book, to be honest. It was like a three star. I don't know if I even want to hold on to it because I, I do want to keep books that excite me to no end. Like, An Enchantment of Ravens is a book that I can on any day randomly pick up and just really enjoy and just get, get into the world. This book, I think she, Margaret Ro Rogerson had a specific image she wanted to, like, convey and tell there's a girl who suffered a lot of pain as a child a demon literally possessed her in this world there's lots of demons and spirits and stuff happening very cool world that's what she does so well that's what this author does so well it was definitely a um, reluctant hero story this girl who had such a hard past now she kind of wants to fly under the radar keep things simple she doesn't really want to talk to anybody she hates socializing and then now she has to like save the world <laughs> lots of pressure she doesn't know what she's doing the whole story together I, I didn't fall in love with the character enough to be like yeah but i don't think she's supposed to be a likable character so i think the purpose of that book was definitely fulfilled it makes sense but i don't know if i want to reread it and that's kind of the vibe i want from my book collection no judgment guys y'all and then another book that also disappointed me which makes me really sad because like everyone talks about this book and how much they love it and I thought this would literally be the favorite book of this year. And that's The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. I did enjoy The Start of the Sea. I actually read that first. Um, but I gave it a four star. I knocked it down a star because I thought the, the story of itself kind of felt a little aimless. But I think it's supposed to be whimsical in that way that you can't explain it. And I think that's what Erin Morgenstern kind of enjoys writing. This... Everything's so whimsical, there are no words to explain this magic, but it exists, and it's a practice. So, this is all about two um, competitors, a boy and a girl, who are being trained by two magicians to do this contest, basically. And it's crazy. And again, there's a big ensemble cast here, which I was not expecting. We get to see a lot of the different characters within the circus, and I also love the playing with timeline in here, that we're like, she layers us meeting a boy who's in the future but we see his past aligned with also the girl and the boy the competitors past and it's just interwoven in such an interesting way i really enjoyed that but i think the romance again wasn't too fleshed out and that's a very similar note that i had with the starless sea like these people just love each other and i think we don't get to see them spend a lot of time together so it's hard for me to be like are you in love who are you as a person? Because I think that's the thing. When we talk about the whimsy and 
the structures they're making and the things that they're doing and it's all so cool and then we love each other and we're kissing and it's those two don't connect for me like the plot of them building and making things doesn't fully connect with it or, or should it doesn't translate in my brain to like romance that's the only thing so i think overall super dope amazingly written like so profound and beautiful so i can totally understand why it's so many people's favorites i was kind of hoping for it to be a favorite it's just not and that's okay and i think that's just because personal taste if there's a romantic kind of underline in the story that makes you literally fight for your life it's the core of this story about why these two are trying to survive it's because they love each other and they love the people around them i saw that it was just hard for me to fully believe it and i think it's because we didn't really spend a lot of time with just the characters doing everyday things i think that that's kind of why i like these two books so much because you you get to peek into the, the the heart of the people a lot more even though those are short books and this is a pretty long book um but yeah i just didn't get to i didn't get to peek into these characters so much but i did enjoy the world the world is so cool in december i managed to read two books Binding Me by Viola Davis, which is a five-star read. I want to buy that book so bad. I am more in love with Viola Davis than I ever could have been, ever. Like, I just love her so much. She's such a profound person, and I, I highly recommend reading her memoir. Um, She won a Grammy because of it. Her audiobook is so good if you have time, listen to it. Her story is heartbreaking, but also so inspirational, especially as an actor who's going through kind of not the same things as her, completely different things. I, I come from so much privilege and I'm so understanding and so grateful. And she just makes me so, it just makes me so grateful for my life. And I, I, I wish nothing but love for her and she deserves the whole world. And then the last book that I read, in 2023 is Iron Flame, which I kind of, I kind of want to put in my favorite books of the year, to be honest, because it was, it was so good. If you didn't see my reading vlog, reading this, I explain, it takes about 300 pages for the plot to get serious versus the first 300, which is kind of like the first book where, you know, I love you, I don't love you, oh, there's dragons, oh, we should train, you know, just a bunch of stuff. I think, I think I have to give Iron Flame a five star i like kind of don't want to because yeah i don't know i don't know i have i have mixed feelings okay those are all the books that i read in 2023 let's let's see if i can pick a top five these are all the books <laughs> that i've been keeping next to me like being like oh it's just my favorite so now let's see if i can pick just five immediately i'm thinking dreams of gods and monsters good but not a top fave for the year i think assistance to the villain good and enjoyable but maybe not a top favorite in the year just in comparison to everything a touch of darkness uh, oh this is so hard oh my god oh my god are these gonna be my fave for the year <laughs> this is literally what a wide range of novels <laughs> okay so here's my stack top five for 2023 we have divine rivals which gives fantasy historical romance vibes i have iron flame adult romance fantasy heavy politics crazy town alone with you in the ether by olivia blake adult contemporary fiction romance the romantic agenda by claire con this story really just spoke to me and it was so fun and enjoyable to read and then lastly the neighbor favor <laughs> so cute okay so clearly i'm a i think i'm a romance girly is what i've come to decide i like romance in all genres that's what it looks like that's what i've learned that's it for today's video let me know what was your top book for 2023 and i want to see i want to read in the comments what were your favorite reads and i'm gonna do an unhaul next because i'm getting a little stressed out i think i've been reading not in a beneficial way to myself sorry i know this is a little bit of a tangent at the end of the video but maybe some of you guys will relate to me where i've been reading books for content instead of reading books that I actually want to read. And I've been trying to read like a hundred plus books every year, mostly just to hit that number. And I'm not enjoying a lot of the books that I read. So my focus for 2024 is definitely reading more books that I enjoy wholeheartedly. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.